Hi everybody, this is Angela Savage, the daughter of IndyCar driver Swede Savage. It's time to watch stories from motorsports. My buddy, Doug Kenny, loves to share the journey of people in racing, and he is an amazing dude. Drivers, owners, fans, and team members, watch the SFM podcast. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny from Stories from Motorsports. I'd like to thank my buddy Josh May for the YouTube work he did years ago that inspired me to create this platform. I'd like to thank my buddy Victor Sifton for convincing me to get back into it after my hiatus from 2017 to 2019. I have a very special treat for you all today with an amazing journey from an amazing racing figure. Driver, start your engines! Good. What are your ambitions? I would move on to different ranks. I would definitely like to um, become a better driver. Um, I think that's basically the main goal for every driver is to become better and to move up. A girl can dream, you know, everybody wants to be like an NASCAR racer. Everybody probably wants a career out of it, and I would kill for that. But even just being able to have the opportunity to say that I did it, I went out there, and I'm still pushing to be a better driver, even if it doesn't leave my home track, it means everything to me. Yeah. Based on how you're doing at the moment, do you think you're better in sports cars or or stock cars or both? Honestly, I think anybody with just focusing and putting effort in can be better at either or. Um, but like I said before, um, racing at the firm uh, in my Mustang was more for fun. It wasn't really that competitive. So this is my first like real like competitive racing. You know, I'm honestly just shooting for Rookie of the Year. Yeah. How close are you to winning the Rookie of the Year so far? Well, right now we're only one race into the season because uh, the last race, the second one, unfortunately got rained out because we live in Florida love that for us i will race this weekend and it just basically is off of points and everything like that because i think there's three other rookies and it's whoever is like leading in points each time is who will be closer to that spot yeah are you second in the standings at the point or which one honestly i'm not too sure on the very last time i kind of just went out there to go out there because you know um, there was two other girls the last season. The one girl isn't there, Courtney. 
and Lizzie moved up into a different class, into the Bomber B. So when I had found that out, I was kind of a little bit intimidated because I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm out here with big dogs. Like, I was a little nervous. So I basically was just really focusing on, like, doing better lap times, um, handling the car, figuring out what we needed to change up for me for the next race because my coach is, I think, 6'2", and I'm, like, 5'1". So that's a very big difference to try to change things up between the seat, the mirror, um, everything like that. Yeah, for sure. So have you ever gotten mad behind the wheel to the point where you've wanted to run into someone or just nudge them out of the way, or are you not like that? Um, I haven't gotten the confidence for that yet. Honestly, I had told one of the guys at the tracks that um, I need to grow a pair of balls. <laughs> confidence out there. Um, I did get frustrated in my last race because I definitely pulled a rookie move and I kind of choked up a bit and I had hit the brakes when I should have just stayed lifted and I ended up spinning out and turn three and given the, the wall a tap so I definitely introduced myself to the wall first race of the season. Yeah, I know what you mean you know when you're a new timer you're sort of learning the ropes you know yeah and honestly like i know i'm out there to compete with everybody else but that that, that honestly that race i was competing more with myself because i was just so in my head and i let that get the best of me yeah i actually saw one one driver having a red mist when i used to compete in go-karting and it was my very first debut in the in the go-kart k1 series out in phoenix do you want to hear about it yeah, of course. I was actually in the same mindset as you when I ran my first race. I was just there to learn the ropes. If I won, that was good, but I wasn't expecting, obviously, to win in my first start. And other people had, obviously, more experience, so I took that as a learning race. And I actually did pretty good. Out of 15 go-karts, I ended up finishing in the top five, which I thought was good. And then on the final lap, the, the race leader got nudged out of the way by the second place competitor and while they didn't crash the second place guy ended up beating him by a nose because of the nudge you know mm -hmm. a photo finish and I I remember taking the cool down lap and I looked over my shoulder and saw that the second place guy that was leading he took some foam off of his seat protecting his head and threw it at the other competitor in a fit of anger and then it landed on this on the it landed on the track and I almost ran over it in the process. Oh wow. Go kart officials were not very impressed and we had like two races scheduled for the next week and the guy was given a one race suspension for throwing the, the, the foam, obviously. Ooh, that sucks. It does, but what was interesting was those two races were held on the same day. So the suspension really lasted for only like five hours. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's what can happen when you have a red mist take over you, stuff like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I just... Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to not do when I'm out there, because I've seen... I've, everybody makes jokes about it when it happens in NASCAR and stuff like that, and they get like penalties and stuff like that. So I'm definitely trying to, like, keep composed and, you know, not do that. I also have a lot of respect for the drivers that are out there. Like, yes, they are my competitors, but we're all there for the same reason. It's because we all love to race. And honestly, like, if anything, like, I'd rather keep the respect outside of the car. That way, you know, if, you know, if somebody ever needs anything or if I need advice, like, I have that. That's great to hear. What is New Smyrna Speedway? Uh, it's uh, the home track that we have. So close to me, we have Daytona International Speedway, which is a legendary track, as everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And then New Smyrna is a short track that's local to where I live. How far is it from Daytona? About 20 minutes. Oh, so you're in the Florida area. Yes. Really, really cool. Have you ever been to the Daytona Speedway? Yes, multiple times. What's your favorite story from being over there? Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please hit like and subscribe if you did so, and um, please continue supporting our amazing guest. 
And everybody, we'll see you next time on SFM. Hi, this is Ted Warner speaking. While the checkered flag has waved for this program, stay tuned for next week for the next episode of SFM. Thanks to Doug Kenny for what he does for motorsports.